the ACT Monologues. The Countess by Jason Kenyon Performed by Fee Marchant What on earth am I doing here? It's cold, it's damp, and there is the stench of something rotting in the air. Or possibly in the drains. Or frankly, I believe I would be better off in the family crypt. Ah, oh, well, they say you never appreciate what you've got until it's gone. You know, there was a time when I would not have been seen dead in a place like this. Lo, oh, yes, you may not think it to look at me, but I have noble blood flowing in my veins. Some of it my own. I was once a woman of position, a countess, no less, with servants at my beck and call, noblemen prostrating themselves at my feet for love, and peasants cowering at my feet in fear. <laughs> Those were good times. Of course, my dear husband, the Count, put an end to all that, the idiot. He ruined everything because he wanted to make a name for himself, a name for himself. He was Count Dracula of Transylvania, for heaven's sake. Wasn't that enough? Oh, no, he had to declare himself Lord of the Undead. He just could not comprehend the importance of discretion when it comes to people like us. Throughout history, the great and the good have had their little foibles, shall we say. Guilty pleasures that others might take exception to, but if indulged in moderation, do no one any real or lasting harm. Well, no one important, that is. Take my family. We had been drinking the peasants in secret for centuries without any problems. The key was never to drain them completely, otherwise they died, and their fellow villagers tended to become unreasonable. Just a pint or two per peasant taken while they were asleep in their beds, or out in the forest and frightened out of their wits, and everyone was happy. The peasants feared us, yes, but that was just the natural order of things. Occasionally a nobleman would come in search of a wife, or generally such a visitor would make a pleasant change from peasants, but if he should find favour with one of our number, he would be inducted into our little club before returning to their principality with their new bride. So it was with my dear husband. Oh, he was handsome enough, and charming. So charming. And for a while, I believed that I had found a kindred spirit. Well, sadly, on our return to his native land, it soon became apparent that, in addition to being handsome and charming, he was a raging egomaniac with a roving eye and a gargantuan inferiority complex. No sooner had we arrived at the dilapidated hovel that passed for his castle than he commenced his reign of terror, slaughtering the peasants, turning people with absolutely no social standing into vampires without any regard for the principles of supply and demand, and filling the castle with scantily clad maidens with a penchant for fresh babies. I decided that discretion was the better part of valour and returned home to my family confident that he would soon meet his end at the hand of rampaging villagers and be consigned to the obscurity of myth, as had all those of his mettle in the past. I had not bargained with the intervention of that imbecilic hack Bram Stoker. Within weeks of the publication of his exaggerated and frankly libelous account of my husband's activities, the countryside of Eastern Europe was awash with hordes of would-be Van Helsings, searching for someone to thrust a sharpened piece of wood into without thought of whether they deserved it or not. Would you care to know what it feels like to have a stake thrust into your body by someone as ignorant of your anatomy as they are of your true nature? It hurts. A lot. And when they miss the heart, as such morons always do, it continues to hurt for a very long time. Contrary to that idiotic Irishman's assertions, our wounds do not heal in seconds, 
nor do we transform into bats or dogs or fog or sleep in coffins, and we are not partial to bug-eating servants. We are simply higher up the food chain than Homo sapiens. We're like polar bears. And no one goes round waving crosses in their faces, spraying them with holy water, or force-feeding them garlic. Well, not if they have any desire to see another dawn. Thanks to the illiterate drivel of that damned Irishman, we were hounded from our ancestral homes. Those who chose to stand and fight found themselves overwhelmed by the numbers, if not the intelligence of their opponents. And the rest were scattered to the four winds. I finally made landfall here in the Americas, but the damage Stoker did was merely the beginning. Others have taken his ridiculous ramblings and embellished upon them, not only in the printed word, but also in motion pictures. And worst of all, on television. Anne Rice, Stephanie Meyer and Joss Whedon. There is an unholy trio for you. Thanks to them, with their Lestats and their Bellas and their Buffies, the vampire, once the stuff of nightmares, is now the erotic fantasy of acne-ridden, drooling adolescence. I barely step out of my hotel and there is scores of young men and women in Team Edward t-shirts begging me to bite them, to turn them, to grant them eternal youth. A forest of jugular veins laid out before me with blood that tastes of burgers and pizza and pickled gherkins. I do not, of course, turn them. Unlike my late husband, I am quite discriminating in such matters. I have no desire to spend eternity with such creatures. I can barely stand to spend five minutes with them. Nevertheless, beggars, as they say, cannot be choosers. So I take what I need, just a pint or so from a select few, and by the time they realise that sunlight will not cause them to spontaneously combust, I have moved to a new location. I lie to myself, say that it is no different to the good old days, but it is. I always used to enjoy the thrill of the hunt, the excitement of cornering my prey, and almost primal satisfaction as their blood flowed down my throat like a fine old wine. These days there is no hunt, there is no prey, only convenience food. Oh well... I suppose it is time to go and meet and eat my public, I suppose. You know, it takes all the fun out of going out for a meal if the entree actually wants to be eaten.